Ten. Stand by the Tick Studio. Seven. Six. Stand by camera one, mics one and two. Three. Two. One. Tick Studio. Hello and welcome back to another episode of MCTV News. I'm your host, Ryder Williams. And I'm Ryder Matovich. On today's show, we will see a report about the Home Economics 9 and the Phys Ed 9 classes taught here at MCHS. As well, our reporter Kingston Remillard brings us a report about a local business, Ultimate Custom Cabinets. But first, here's our top story. Male curling fans in Mournville have an opportunity to play every Monday night as part of the Men's Curling League. Reporter Oliver Harding had an opportunity to talk to some of the participants and bring us this story. We're going to be looking at the Men's Curling League. How hard is it? What is it all about? And why did some of the people join? I enjoy curling because it's more of a game of sportsmanship and it teaches people how to be more sportsmanlike. We know why people might like it, but let's see why some of the other players might suggest the game to others. I suggest it to a lot of people as it's a great sport combined with competitiveness and skillfulness. It takes a lot of patience. Those were some good reasons why people might join. But how easy is the game really? It can get quite difficult because there's lots of skill required to play it, throwing the rock, figuring out how it's going to curl into the end. So I'd say it's relatively difficult for me. Curling is more difficult than expected, but why did some of the players join? Curling was a big sport that my mom played and I just kind of brought it in over time as she introduced me to it. Most people who join curling usually has a friend or family that tells them about it. For MCTV, this is Oliver Harding reporting. Last week saw some bone chilling temperatures with the mercury dipping below minus 40 in some local areas. To see if more of the same is in store, here's, an MCTV, here's our MCTV meteorologist Kingston Remillard to let us know. Thank you, Ryder. And here's the forecast for uh, Canada. Uh, lots of snow in uh, Yellow Horse, got sitting at negative 17. Lots of snow in Vancouver, 1 degrees. In Regina, a bit cloudy, uh, sitting at negative 22. Yellowknife, a bit cloudy or snowy, sitting at negative 24. Iqaluit, a bit sunny, sitting at negative 4. Uh, in Winnipeg, a bit sunny, sitting at negative 18. Uh, in Toronto, it's a bit, bit uh, snowy, sitting at negative 3. In Montreal, it's negative seven, a bit cloudy. Let's look at the Maritimes. It's uh, in Halifax, it's uh, negative four, a bit snowy. And in St. John's, a bit rainy at negative two. Let's look at Alberta. Uh, snowy all around, except for down in the Rockies. Uh, high level, Jasper and Calgary are all at negative 18. Fort Mac, negative 19. Edmonton, negative 19 and uh, Red Deer is negative 19. Down to Medicine Hat, it's negative 20. Banff is sunny, negative 17. And uh, Grand Prairie is negative 21, also snowy. Let's look at the current conditions. Today in Morinville, it's uh, negative 21, a bit sunny. Wind is 10 kilometers per hour. The humidity is 77%. Sunrise is at 8.41 a.m. and sunset is at 4.47 p.m. Let's look at the forecast for the week. Uh, Friday, sitting around negative 17 to 18. Saturday, negative 13 to 15. Sunday, snowy at negative 14. Monday is negative 13. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is uh, negative seven, a bit warmer, back to Ryder. Thank you, Kingston. Next up, have you ever been curious about what it's like to be a student in grade nine in a, inside a grade nine home economics class offered here at Mournville Community High School? Well, Grace Mashuk brings us that answer in this news report. 
OMEC Economics is an option available to all grade 9 students. You learn valuable skills for life such as sewing and cooking. Let's get an inside look with Luis Sansano. OMEC has to offer two major units. One is foods and the other one is sewing. So in foods we tackle uh, baking and um, mostly baking like cookies, brownies and cakes. And sewing is definitely uh, using a sewing machine, hand sewing and creating projects. The whole of the CTS portion of the school has undergone immense renovation, including the kitchen, which is used for home ec. Luis Sansano will now share her thoughts on the new kitchen. So blessed with this kitchen. We have wolf ovens, so those are gas, convection ovens. We've got um, tons of equipment, uh, skillets and Dutch ovens, so lots of tools, uh, utensils for the students. Dishwashers are brand new. We got built-in microwaves with every station. And I would say just the high quality of all the stainless steel, so very sanitary. Let's listen to what a student's favorite part of the class is. Uh, we cooked some blueberry muffins and they were really good and it was a really fun process to make them. Let's talk to a student here if they would recommend the class to a new MCHS student. Yes, because we get it because we get to cook and we get to sew and it helps teach me life skills. Home Ec is a valuable class that teaches you life lessons and can stem into many jobs and careers. This is Grace Mishuk from MCTV signing off. Here are your school announcements for Thursday, January 18th. Student Council will be serving free hot chocolate during the morning break and at lunch tomorrow. Stop by for a warm pick-me-up. Final exams and midterms are just around the corner. The last day of classes for the first semester is tomorrow. Check the school's website or with your teacher to see when and where you will be writing. Remember, it's never too early to start studying. For these and all other school information, keep connected by listening to the daily announcements, logging on to the school's website, at www.mchs.gsacred.ab.ca or by following the schools on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. As well, be sure to subscribe to our school's YouTube channel by searching MCTV Mournville. Coming up next, reporter Kingston Remillard had a chance to chat with his father, who works at Ultimate Custom Cabinets, to give us a better understanding about what that local company does. This carpenter runs his own company in the construction industry and is working hard after the holidays. Let's see what job we are doing today. Uh, today I'm here in Spruce Grove and I'm doing a maple railing that is continuous 2 by 3 with a spindle pattern. Now it may seem easy to become a carpenter, but let's hear what you have to do to actually become one. It takes some years of training to get used to it. Uh, most carpenters are uh, very equipped and knowledgeable with the railing, but uh, it does take time to learn. Time, practice, and experience is definitely a crucial part to work in this particular type of job, but what schooling would you need to receive for it? I go to Nate or uh, trade school for four years and go through the program, and definitely many hours of experience are required. There are thousands of different types of wood around the world that you can use for anything. But what kind of wood is best for working with railing? The best wood is poplar or a softer wood because it punches out a lot easier. Uh, maple is definitely a typically much harder wood and it takes a lot more to uh, sand it and punch it out. It must take a long time to learn and memorize everything about the job. But how long has he been in the construction industry and how did he start? I've been in the construction industry for over 25 years and I started when I was about 14 years old working for my dad and then I took over his company when I was about 25 years old and started my own business. Now that's a long time if you think about it, but how many houses has he done since he started? Oh, I've done a lot of houses in the, in the Edmonton area. I do a job a day typically, so hundreds, hundreds of jobs. Now out of all those houses he's done, what is the most railing one's ever had? Uh, I've done jobs where the railing has exceeded 125 plus feet of railing. And lastly, let's hear what he listens to on a full day of work. Uh, I usually like to rock out to the bear, but occasionally I'll switch it up and go to... ACDC, 
And with that, this is Kingston Remillard reporting for MCTV News. Welcome back. Here with your sports recap, including last night's scores in the NHL and NBA, as well as this weekend's NFL playoff wildcard action, is our very own in-studio sports expert, Ryder Williams. Thanks, Ryder. In the NHL last night, three games were scheduled. Montreal beat New Jersey 3-2. The Red Wings required overtime to beat the Panthers also 3-2. And the Chicago vs. Buffalo game was postponed due to weather. Next in the NBA, Toronto beat Miami 121-97. The Timberwolves were victorious over the Pistons 124-117. And the Atlanta Hawks edged the Orlando Magic 106-104. And the Celtics won at home over San Antonio 117-98. And Cleveland embarrassed Milwaukee 135-95. On the weekend, the wild card spots in the NFL playoffs were decided with six matchups. The Houston Texans beat the Cleveland Browns by a score of 45-14 and will face the Baltimore Ravens this Saturday. The Kansas City Chiefs had a strong defensive effort against the Miami Dolphins beating them 26-7. The Packers were victorious over the Cowboys 48-32 and will be in San Francisco on Saturday to take on the 49ers. Detroit edged Los Angeles 24-23 and after canceling their matchup due to heavy snowfall, the Buffalo Bills made short work of the Pittsburgh Steelers on Monday, cruising to an easy 31-17 victory. They will take on the Chiefs this Sunday and finally, the Tampa Bay crushed Philadelphia 32-9, earning them the right to play Detroit this Sunday afternoon. Up next, MCTV provides students many opportunities to stay physically active. In grade 9, students have the option of taking this school's Fit for Life class, but everyone gets to participate in Phys Ed 9. Reporter Braden Locke headed to the gym and provides us with this report. PE 9 is essential in high school for all grade 9s are required to take it. So we asked some students how they feel about PE and this is what they had to say. I mean, I, mean, I guess so because like it's, it's for to get fit. So. I mean, people, some people are not like fit and people need to get fit. So. You might be wondering this next student's thoughts on gym class. Let's ask Adrian Bayo on what he has to think. Yes. And why is that? Uh, because like you could exercise your body. Here is Noah Holland's thought on gym class and whether he likes it or not. Um, it's just I don't want to be sitting in a classroom like 24/7. So you know, it's it's quite fun. Like we get to play like basketball and all those sports because it's fun and you don't really have to do any work necessarily. So it's pretty fun. We asked Oliver if he liked gym class and this is what he had to say. I like gym class because uh, you can get like stronger and better at what you do and get better at sports. Overall, many of the students we asked said that they enjoyed gym class, which is good. I mean, I like to stay fit and be healthy. For MCTV News, I'm Brayden Locke reporting. And that's it for another episode of MCTV News. Join us again next semester when the grade 10, 11, and 12 students take over. Expect to see weekly episodes starting up again in March. So how's your day been? You know, it's been pretty good. Woke up, came to school, you know, got some good old work done, and now I'm here doing the show. Yeah, do you have any plans for this weekend or no? Uh, this weekend, I think I'm probably just going to stay home, you know, chill a little bit, watch some TV, watch, uh, probably watch some football. All right, yeah. I mean, I don't have much going on this weekend either, but yeah. Anyways, from all of us at MCTV News, I'm Ryder Williams. And I'm Ryder Matovich. Thanks for tuning in.